root percent, hundred percent. So there, so there we have it. So now, we, now when we when we looked at the actual here, we said the actual outcome should be around uh, 1.92 per card. So you could see, let's let's put that here. Let's say actual should be equal to. We'll we'll pull in our number here. 1.92 or 1 out of 52 and so I'm gonna make that absolute by selecting F4 on the keyboard and then it copies it down so it's the same cell reference all the way down because I put a dollar sign bef bef before the J and the and the 4 selecting the entire column home tab number group percentifying it so let's add some decimals number group couple decimals and then I can look at the difference difference and we could say okay this is going to be equal to this cell minus this cell again because it's in a table it'll copy it all the way down let's add some decimals selecting the entire thing and then home tab number group decimalizing it and adding uh, or percentifying it, adding a couple decimals. So there we have there we have our change. So so it's pretty close on on uh, on each of the cards that we're that we're drawing out, right? So this is each of the cards, each one of them we would expect to be because it, they're all representing you know one out of fifty two chance if it was an even deck. So you can also think about it this way. If you drew one card uh, 5,000 times, how many times would you expect to draw any one card? Like an ace of spades, for example, it would be equal to the 5,000 draws times the actual 1.29 about, or in other words, equals the 5,000 draws uh, times 1 over 52. So, right, you, that's what the expectation would kind of be. Okay, so then, so, so let's, if we wait, we could make a graphical representation of this. I'll do this fairly quickly because we're running long on the time here. So we could take our results. Let's just take our results over here. And we're going to select the whole thing, not taking the total into account, and then saying insert and charts histogram, making a histogram. So if I select this, bottom amount I could go to my my bin size and say I would just like the bin size to be like one so I try to say like 0.99 and so now you've got each number you might say okay what if I make a bar chart that will list just 1 to 52 and then give me and then give me the results in a bar chart so to do that I could select I'm going to select the two columns. I want this column on the left. So I want the 1 to 52 on the X axis. And then scrolling back up, I'm holding down control to select the result column. And that's what I would like on, uh, on the Y. And so I'm going to scroll down to there. And then I'm going to place it where I want to be before I insert it this time. And then insert charts and the bar graph this time. So now we have a bar graph. Now it's not doing exactly what I want. You say, what is it doing? So we can then, I'm gonna get rid of the title and I'm gonna look at the data. So chart design, let's look at the data. So what did it do? It, it put both of them over here on the Y. So what I'm gonna say is I really want over here on this side, I just want the second series of data uh, the results. So I think I removed the first series of data and it has just the second one. And then over here, I want it to go from 1 to 52. I think it's doing that. So I'm going to say, okay, that's good. So I'm going to say, okay. So now I've got my chart down here, 1 to 51. That's interesting. It didn't go quite to 52. Let's take a look at this second. Actually, let's go back up to my data. And then I'm going to edit this side and say, let's pick up this side should be picking up this series of numbers over here. One, two, fifty-two. And okay. 
and then OK. So now it doesn't show me the end of it. It still stops at 50, but there we have it. And it's still stopping at 51. Poor K! So it looks like it's actually skipping every other number, 1, 3, 5. So let's go into here. And I, I'm going to say in here at category numbers. And then under the labels down here, I want to have it specific interval unit instead of automatic of one. So now it kind of crowds them in because it put them all together. So this would be a really long kind of graph. I can pull it to the right so I can see all the numbers spaced out. Uh, well enough to appreciate the graph so I'll make this a little wider holding control scrolling down a bit so there we've got our super wide uh, graph and I could put my data labels in here I could go into let's just click anywhere in here and go to my chart designs and we could go to the chart elements and add data labels we'll put it like there it is in the center uh, let's put them kind of up towards the top. And now I'm going to remove this series two. I don't need the legend. And so so there we have it. I, and I could kind of mirror these two, uh, making them somewhat the same length. So you can see basically, you know, if, if we drew these out infinite one card an infinite number of times, you would expect then the value to be, let's do that value again down here. If I, well, you would expect it to have an even odds, meaning it comes up 1.92% uh, of the times, which in this case, if I drew it 5,000 times, uh, times the 1.92 would be 96. So it, this would be kind of like the expected, expected value or the estimated value for any one of them. So I'll put some brackets around there. And so you can kind of get an idea of where these are hovering around. Now, if this wasn't an even drawn, this should represent an even draw, then we can we can think about a system next time. We'll talk more about, well, what if it's not an even deck? What if we're missing a card or there's multiple other cards in it? And then we can kind of see what would happen if we were to map it out in this kind of fashion. So we'll dive more into that in future presentations.